Thank you. Um, Doc, my question is for Dr. Colleen, if anyone else wants to jump in on this. Uh, my area of interest, and actually for the last two Congresses, I have introduced legislation on weather modification research. Um, it, I'm told that we don't even have the data, um, for instance, where there is cloud seeding in Colorado uh, if there is any difference in rainfall in Wyoming or Montana uh, and that that would be an area where at least if we begin to track um, that would be the basis of research mm -hmm. and my my original intention was to put it in NOAA uh, a weather modification research um, opportunity and tracking uh, of uh, weather not only where you might have modification efforts, but um, in the surrounding areas and tracking the, the wind um, uh, currents and uh, directions, um, but also to, for, for the future to see what works and what doesn't. And we're just seeing so much more um, of an intensity in our weather now than we have seen before. My question to you is, do you agree that we need to have this kind of tracking and research, and where would you best place it? Um, is NOAA the right place, or the White House Office of uh, uh, Science? Where would you say we would have the best traction for this kind of research? Well, let me first fully agree with you that, that this is a, a topic that's worthy of a research effort. Um, as the planet warms, there's greater rates of evaporation from the world's, world's ocean. There's more latent heat energy that is pr produced in the atmosphere, and there's greater levels of water vapor. So the whole hydrological cycle is intensified. That means we get more severe weather at times. We get more evaporation, so we get more drought. It's paradoxic that you get more drought and you also get more severe um, episodes of severe rainfall. The system is intensified, and, and it, but it's predictable at some level. And I think today we don't know quite the level of predictability of, of rainfall and severe weather events in atmospheric phenomena, but that's coming. There was a big effort 30 years ago, as you know, uh, to, to look at um, uh, weather modification studies. And in some ways that was premature because we didn't have the observational tools at that time. We didn't have the polarimetric radar to look at the cloud condensation nuclei and their shapes and to determine the physical processes that lead to precipitation out of clouds, the types of clouds. We now have those kind of capabilities, aircraft, radars, etc. So we're much better positioned now than we were 30 years ago to really investigate the physical mechanistic processes that drive to severe weather events. And I, so I think it is a very, uh, a very important uh, area. Uh, and of course, it's connected to climate because of this intensification of the hydrologic cycle that I alluded to. Where it should be in the government, um, uh, I, I think the, um, the, that the federal agencies are interacting very well. They, uh, they, they're experts in all of these federal agencies who can appreciate this kind of uh, project. Within the National Science Foundation, we have a place to go for research proposals dealing with this and they will be effectively reviewed and funded when they come in. Uh, I think what's needed is a stimulus to the scientific community that opens the door to new and pioneering transformative research in this area. So I like the question. Do you think um, that the National Science Foundation would be the, uh, the better uh, policeman for where the research would go, or do you think NOAA should, should be that, um, that agency? How would you, if you were advising me on how to structure where it goes and, and if there is some added involvement by one or the other, where would you say? I, I would think partnerships are the right approaches. NOAA has more operational responsibilities and service responsibilities for stakeholders. Mm -hmm. NSF is the basic research organization where our investigators can look at the nitty gritty aspects of what certain types of clouds do under certain circumstances, can model the paths of hurricanes and so forth. So I think it's a research to operations transition, and both agencies have their natural roles in that. I just have a couple of seconds left. Let me just ask you, um, if we 
start gathering the data, do you see a time when we could also do uh, mitigation if, if the science said um, a hurricane that is a level um, two in the Pacific, or well, Atlantic actually, um, off the coast of Florida, um, and it, when tracking, it turns into a four when it gets to Florida and then on into the Gulf of Mexico, that by having the research, there's a time at which we might be able to mitigate it out in mm -hmm. the Atlantic Ocean so that it isn't a four when it gets to Florida or Alabama or Louisiana or Texas. Yeah. Is that something that in conceptually that we might look forward to? That's beyond our reach today. It's probably beyond our reach in the next 10 years. But I could, I could conceive of, uh, of such uh, kinds of things in the, in the long term. As we further understand the nonlinear development of hurricanes, they develop, after all, from very small perturbations off the coast of Africa often, and they, some of them grow and uh, some of them diminish. And, and so I could imagine intervention, I could imagine it, intervention strategies, but I wouldn't want to even I know. It's, imply that we we're don't have anywhere the close yet, to that but, today. Yeah. But I, I would just hope that if we start with research that eventually uh, we'll be able to, um, to, to go in that direction. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman.